Bear markets can be painful, but if traded properly, they can be very rewarding. In this video, I will tackle the question, how do you sell put options in a bear market? There's no Wall Street expression that goes, bulls take the stairs up, but bears jump out the window. The idea being expressed here is that markets tend to rise slowly and steadily, while declines or bear markets, they tend to be dramatic and to happen very fast. Because they are dramatic and they happen so fast, bear markets tend to be shorter in duration. In fact, the average length of a bear market is just over nine and a half months. That's quite a bit shorter than the average bull market, which is about two and a half years. Since 1945, that two and a half years has actually been lengthened because on average, since that time, bull markets have lasted over five years. Over the last 91 years of trading history, only 20 of those years have been bear markets. To look at it another way, stocks have been on the rise for over 75% of the time over the past 90 plus years. Some research shows that on average in a bear market, stocks lose approximately 36% of their value. Looking back to one of the most recent bear markets, the one between 2007 and 2009, that bear market lasted 1.3 years and caused the SP500 to go down almost 52%. But how do you successfully trade and invest in a bear market? And how do you do so using options? Let's make the assumption that a trader is looking at a 50 year time horizon. In that case, they can expect to go through on average about 15 bear markets. All bear markets can be tough to experience as you watch your portfolio value drop. But it's during that time that you need to remember that those downturns, they've always been a temporary part of the trading process. It's important as a trader that during a bear market, you have a long-term focus. You want to focus on investing in quality, focus on building positions slowly over time, not all at once. And most importantly, don't try to catch the bottom. More than half of the S&P 500's strongest days in the past two decades have occurred during a bear market. 32% of the market's best days took place in the first two months of a new bull market. They happened before it was even really clear that we we're actually in a new bull market. In other words, the best way to deal with a bear market is to stay invested. You see, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to time the end of a bear market in the beginning of a bull market. So how would I go about selling put options in a bear market? Let's make the assumption that we don't know that a bear market is coming. Because the reality is that if we did know that a bear market was coming, there's a whole lot of other things that we could do to protect ourselves and to benefit from that bear market. Now you're always going to have some traders or professionals who are making claims that we're about to go into a bear market. So technically, some of them are going to predict the next bear market because someone's always saying that a bear market is coming. So let's just say that we didn't know when the next bear market was actually going to start. Personally, I don't, and most likely you don't know either. One of the best tools you can have at your disposal when trading put options in a bear market is technical analysis. Let's look at an example here of Walgreens. It's a stock that tends to move pretty closely with the overall market because as you can see here, the beta is one. Now Walgreens is currently trading at just over $49 per share. But what I want to do is to take you back to the Great Recession. And let's see what we can pick up from Walgreens stock that can help us learn how to sell put options in the next bear market. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to keep things simple. So let me show you a simple tool that you can use that would help you absorb some of the impact of a bear market crash when the next one happens. Here you see the weekly chart of Walgreens during the July of 2005 to October of 2007 timeframe. One of the technical tools that we like to use is moving averages. In fact, our perfect setup is when both the daily and weekly charts show that a stock is approaching the green 50 and red to a moving average and finding support there. Looking at this chart of Walgreens, on the far right, you see that on the last week of trading in this chart, Walgreens is trading right around $47.5 per share. Notice that the red 200 moving average was at $42.25 per share. If we had held to our preferred entry point, which is when Walgreens was trading right around the red 200 moving average, then we would not have sold a put option this week. In fact, we would have waited for it to come back down to around that $42.25 per share before we sold a put option. That alone would have saved us 11% of Walgreens eventual overall 55% decline. Now in the big picture, that would have been a small percentage of the overall decline because Walgreens bottomed out right around $22 per share, but it still would have saved us from 20% of its overall drop. When you're selling put options, the more support you have right above or right at your short put option, the better. Now truth be told, if you really knew that you were in a bear market and didn't know how long it was going to last, you're probably better off not selling put options unless you want to own the stock anyway. If that's the case, which is put option sellers, we should be willing to buy a stock at the price we're selling those put options at. So if that's the case, then by all means, sell put options in a bear market. The thing is, because volatility is so high, 
those put options are going to be selling for awesome premiums. So even if you have a put option assigned to you, you've already received a tremendous amount of premium up front, so you'd be starting out your stock ownership ahead of the game. On top of that, if I'm going to sell put options in a bearish market, I'm going to be selling them out of the money. Where this is a challenge though, is at the moment that the bear market begins. Here you see Walgreens before the Great Recession back in 2006 and 2007 doing what Walgreens does. It was trading up and down between $40 and $50 per share. But then all of a sudden, on October 1st of 2007, Walgreens dropped from $47 to $41 per share overnight. Little did anyone know at that time, but it would take over five years for Walgreens to return to that same $47 strike price in 2013. You see, the formula is pretty simple if you begin trading in the middle of a bear market. You sell far out of the money put options, collect really high premium because there's so much volatility priced into those options, and if you're assigned the stock, then you own the stock at a great discount. Here we see that Walgreens reached a low in October. So in all, from the high right before this bear market began, Walgreens dropped over 55% in the matter of one year. Obviously, we're looking at this after the fact. But on a side note, charts like this, bearish markets like what we're looking at here, are one of the reasons why I like to take 10% of my monthly cash flow that we get as a result of selling options. No matter how much or how little that 10% is, I take 10% of it and buy stocks outright that I believe are trading at a discount or at a fair price and have a good potential to increase in value. In a bearish market like we're looking at here, this is the perfect opportunity to pick up great companies at a really nice discount. Here you see that if you've been buying Walgreens every month, some of your buys would have been at a 55% discount to where it's trading at before the big drop happened. This is a spreadsheet of Walgreens dividends starting in 2006 and going through 2009. This is just one of the reasons why I like trading in dividend paying companies. Although Walgreens stock price fell off a cliff or jumped out a window on October 1st of 2007, notice that every year, including that year, they raised their dividend. In fact, over the next two years between October 1st of 2007 and October of 2009, they raised the dividends from 9.5 cents per share to 13.75 cents per share. They might be saying, but Randy, that's not really that much. I mean, we're talking pennies. And I agree that it doesn't sound like much, but let's do the math on the amount that they raised the dividend those two years, which was over four cents per share. On a percentage basis, that's almost a 45% increase in the quarterly dividend. And ever since then, as you can see here, Walgreens has been raising its dividend to the point that today it's over 47 cents per share per quarter. That's quadruple what it was back in October of 2007. By selling put options in a boring, stable, solid, consistently profitable company like Walgreens, even if shares are assigned to us, we'll at least be able to collect a dividend that over the past 14 years has been growing exponentially. In fact, it's quadrupled. Obviously, if we had known that Walgreens was going to continue dropping on October 1st, we would not have been selling put options. But you're really just doing the best that you can. I mentioned technical analysis at the beginning of this video. Let's zoom in to the day before Walgreens' big drop. On September 27th, Walgreens trading right around $47 to $48 per share. And as you can see here, since it had pulled away from the green 50 and red 200 moving averages, this is a position that we most likely would not have sold a put option in at that time. We would have waited for it to come down to retest previous support or test the support at the moving averages. Now in the grand scheme of things, it wouldn't have saved us much, but it would have saved us 10%. You see, Walgreens was trading right around $47 and the moving average was around $44.5 per share. So by waiting on it to come down to support at this long-term moving average, it would have definitely saved us some of the downside move. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I'd love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button. And thank you so much for doing that. Now let me give you an example of a put option that we're trying to enter right now in a stock that is in somewhat of a bearish market. The stock is probably one that all of you have heard of is MasterCard. I wanted to focus on MasterCard because it's a trade that we almost made today. Let me talk you through my thinking on why I didn't make the trade today, what I'm looking for, and at what point I'd be willing to sell a put option in MasterCard even though it's in a bearish channel. Let's first look at the weekly chart. Here you see that MasterCard had been in a really nice uptrend. However, over the past several months, it's made a lower low and a lower high. As a result, you might say that MasterCard is in a bit of a bearish or downtrend. In order to confirm the strength of that downtrend, I'd like to see one more down wave, but it's definitely in a bearish trend right now. Also notice that it's still quite a ways from the red 200 moving average. MasterCard is trading around $3.35 per share, and the red 200 moving average is $58 away from it at around $2.77 per share. So ideally, we'd love to wait till MasterCard comes down to this 200 moving average on the weekly chart to do a trade. But unfortunately, MasterCard doesn't do that very often. 
As a matter of fact, if we zoom out here, you see that over the past three years, which included the massive sell-off in March of 2020, it still didn't quite reach the red trend of moving average. In fact, it was only close to it for two weeks before it sprang back up. Please notice the trading channel that I've drawn on the top right of the chart. Notice that in July, it reached a high of right at $400 per share. But then over the next month and a half, it proceeded to decline and make a lower low, which bottomed out right around where it's at now, about $335 per share. It then went up for a month and a half, reached a high of $368 last week. Now it's come back down towards the lower part of this trading channel. You see, if I'm going to sell put option in a bearish stock, I'm going to wait for it to come down to the lower part of the downward sloping channel, and then I'm going to try and sell that put option around support, or better yet, below it. Let's now look at the daily chart. I've now zoomed out here about a year and a half, so you see that MasterCard had again been in a pretty nice overall uptrend. However, back in August and September, it broke below the red to a moving average here on the daily chart. Now that moving average has been serving as resistance for it. Here you see on my daily trading ideas sheet, on a daily basis, I look at the stocks that are experiencing the biggest declines that day, which are also in my list of over 200 companies that I'd be willing to trade options in or own outright. I review each one looking for the best trading opportunity based on technical analysis. A stock will stay on this list until it experiences a sharp rebound, and at that point, I'll take it off the list. You see, I'm looking for stocks that have recently experienced a sharp decline, but are beginning to stabilize and find support. In fact, you see that today, we had four potential trades. We have potential trades in Amazon, Kimberly Clark, Lazard, and Southern Company. In fact, you see that we took advantage of two of those by selling put options in Lazard and Southern Company. However, we came in for MasterCard, so notice that there were no notes beside MasterCard because it wasn't in an advantageous spot for us to do an option trade today. I'll tell you though, it was on there yesterday. However, because of the strong up day today, the returns, that they just weren't good enough if I sold a put option at a strike price that I'd feel comfortable selling it at. You see, I know MasterCard is in a downtrend on the daily chart. Yesterday, in fact, it made a new lower low right around $323. Now you can see from the long leg that by the end of the day, the buyers had come back in and pushed the price back up, so it ended up being an up day. But the question is, even though MasterCard is in a downtrend, when would I actually feel comfortable selling a put option in it? Let me show you. Let's zoom in now to the last five months and let me talk you through my thoughts and what I'm looking for in order to sell a put option in MasterCard. If I could get a good enough return, I'd be willing to sell the 315 put option that expires next month on December 17th, which is 43 days away. The reason I'd be willing to sell a put option at that strike price is that it's below the current support level, which is at 330. It would also be below the next potential support level of 321 and right above the next support level at 313. With all these support levels, as well as the fact that MasterCard will be trading right at the bottom of a trading channel that it tends to bounce off of, I'd be willing to sell a short-term put option at the 315 strike price. As you can see here, that put option is currently trading for $5.25 per share. The problem is that that only equates to a 14% annualized non-leverage return. That's just not good enough for me on a brand new position. So that's one reason why I'm not selling a put option in MasterCard right now. But the other reason is I want to wait until MasterCard is at the very bottom of this downward trading channel. For example, notice back in September, on these two days, that it traded right at the very bottom of the trading channel. If MasterCard reaches an area close to the bottom of this trading channel, I'd be willing to sell a put option in it, even though MasterCard is currently in a downtrend. When it reached the bottom of that trading channel, I would look at support, run returns, and I'd be willing to sell one just below or right at strong support. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see more details on how to fix an option trade that's gone against you, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled, How to Fix a Losing Option Trade. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.